Good evening. This is not the video I was hoping to make today because today, for the first time ever, I got on a train to go and buy a car and came back on a train. I'll explain that in my general chat video, which I'm going to film next. But this one's important. This is about the Felicity Ace cargo ship. There's two cargo ship fires that you need to know about. The first one that happened was in 2022. That's the Felicity Ace. The second one that happened was the Fremantle Highway. The Fremantle Highway is the one that I was speaking about last summer, uh, I think June time. I did a few videos about that and they were quite big, but the Felicity Ace went down first. Now, the Felicity Ace, when it went down, Porsche lost 1,117 cars, Audi 1,944, Volkswagen 561, Bentley 189, and Lamborghini 85. On the ship were Volkswagen ID4s and Audi e-tron electric cars, as well as 15 Lamborghini Aventador LP784 Ultima vehicles. So there's some pretty cool cars on the Felicity Ace. And you might be thinking, why are you talking to me about the Felicity Ace that went down in 2022? This is a big deal. This is news today from Splash247.com. MOL and Alliance take Volkswagen to court over the sinking of the Felicity Ace car carrier. The ship owner of the Felicity Ace and its insurer have filed separate lawsuits in Germany against Volkswagen over the blaze and subsequent sinking of the car carrier. Mitsui OSK Lines and Alliance have identified what they believe to have been a faulty battery in a Porsche electric vehicle as the cause for the fire, which saw 3,965 vehicles go down with the ship two years ago, 400 kilometres off the coast of Portugal. So they're saying the fire was caused by an EV. You know, these EVs that we're buying to save the planet just caused a whole load of pollution when how many cars? 4,000. 4,000 cars were made and then sunk in the sea along with the ship to save the planet. The fire that broke out on a 6,400 CEU ship lasted for three weeks with the damage from the incident estimated to cost anywhere between $400 million and $500 million. On board were Bentleys, Lamborghinis and 1,100 Porsches, as I discussed. Electric vehicles use lithium iron batteries, which when on fire can reach temperatures of more than 2,700 degrees. Splash has been reporting on more and more battery related fires at sea in recent years, in line with the growth in demand for electric vehicles around the world. The dangers of carrying lithium iron batteries on ships were highlighted in an Alliance Global Corporate and Speciality report, which ranked fire and explosion as the number one cause of marine insurance losses by value for 2017 to 2021. Quote from the report, the debate about EVs in shipping in the shipping industry is ongoing with conversations about whether there is a need for dedicated roll on roll off vessels for EVs. So this is some pretty big news then. Volkswagen are already in hot water and struggling on multiple fronts. And now they're effectively in court uh, being accused of causing 500 million pounds worth of damage on a ship with a faulty battery on top of everything else they've got going on at the moment. And the shipping industry is waking up to the fact that shipping these electric vehicle batteries is dangerous. So after the Felicity Ace and the Fremantle Highway, which that's still ongoing, we haven't yet got a cause of fire for the Fremantle Highway, which remember is pretty much the same thing as this. Then we've got the Luton Airport car park fire, which, oh no, wait, that was caused by a diesel Range Rover. You've got quite a lot going on in the car industry at the minute. Volkswagen are on the ropes because of all this. Jaguar Land Rover, Range Rover are on the ropes because of everything that's gone on with, with Range Rover last year, the Luton Airport thing. You've got the Inchcape Jaguar dealership flood thing, which has done no favours for the brand. The I-Pace is just a total disaster, as per my video last night about one accelerating on the motorway. And then you've got the fact that Jaguar have now announced that they're not going to be making saloons or estates, sedans or wagons, if you're in the USA. They're only going to be making SUVs. And of course, we know that they're moving to only electric. So a lot of these manufacturers are in big trouble. You could say they're in deep water, which incidentally is where the Felicity Ace is. Personally, I think this is pretty huge that they're now saying, how did they work that out? How did they know? Let's go back to that. Mitsui OSK Lines and Alliance have identified what they believe to have been a faulty battery in a Porsche EV that caused the fire. 
they must have some CCTV footage from the ship or they must have gone through. I mean, there's 22 crew were on board. They were all safe when this happened. So someone must have seen the fire. I'd love to know what the evidence was for how they found out that it was a Porsche that caused the fire. But I think in shipping and in electric vehicles and in net zero and in the general climate, political, industrial, economical world, this is quite a big deal. <laughs> I think you'll agree. So there we go. Uh, it was an EV after all, even if the Luton Airport fire wasn't. Yeah, I'd, I'd sort of forgotten about these. These were pretty big videos for me last summer with the Felicity Ace and then the Fremantle Highway. Um, so the estimates on Wikipedia say that the cargo loss was 334 million to 400 million, whereas further down the line, they're now saying it's more like 400 to 500 million. Um, I think that's just the cars as well. So the cost of ships will be huge. So the knock on effect of this will be the insurance for shipping will go up. And as we're starting to see there, these ships are starting to say, the shipping companies are starting to say, we don't even want to be shipping these EVs. So what are the manufacturers of the cars going to do if the shipping companies turn around and say, guys, you know these EVs that you're being told to make to hit all of the net zero mandates? Well, you're going to need to find a new way to get them across the oceans because we're not going to carry them. Or they're going to do like car specific, you'll have an EV only cargo ship and then no one will want to staff it. So if you want to earn a lot of money, you need to be in shipping and you need to be willing to be the only ship that is happy to accept electric vehicles. Once again, the net zero thing uh, continues to surprise. Absolute shocker, that one. So why did I come back on a train today? I might as well tell you this. Um, I went to buy an old Volvo and then it turned out that basically it had a very short MOT and then the lady couldn't find any of the paperwork for it. It was high mileage and the tax class was listed as disabled in the UK. You have to tax your vehicle, you have to pay road tax on it. And the road tax is tied to the type of car that it's listed as. A normal car for me would be listed as PLG, which is private light goods, which means I can tax it as um, just like a general human. But you can get discounted or free tax from the government if your vehicle is listed as disabled for the tax bracket. But what's insane is when you submit your form to change the ownership of the car, it doesn't automatically default the tax bracket back to PLG, which it should do. It transferred it over as disabled. So I went to buy this car today to find that I couldn't tax it to drive it on the road. I'd have to send the form back. And by the time the form came back, the MOT would have been up and it needed two rear tyres, and it had no history whatsoever because the lady couldn't find it. So that meant that really, well, firstly, I couldn't drive the car home, but it just meant that it wasn't really, there's not, there wasn't much I could do. So I didn't buy the car. First time I've ever gone home on a train from buying a car. Right, thank you very much. I'm stalling now because I'm waiting for my phone to ring. Any minute now, a man's going to phone me who was involved in the Jaguar I-Pace incident yesterday. I am in touch with the driver and I'm hoping to do an interview with him any minute now. My phone's going to ring. Thank you very much for watching this video. And do hit the subscribe button and make sure you leave a comment. If you made it to the end of the video, just leave a comment that says, Jeff, I'm leaving a comment. That was a funny story or something like that. Because I'm getting strange messages from people saying that my videos are no longer appearing in their feed and they're checking and they're not actually subscribed. And this is in line with what I've been seeing on my channel with subscriber numbers just slowly dribbling. I'm not saying that the subscribers are disappearing, but there's definitely a, a, a slow trickle. Someone emailed me today and said, Jeff, when you hit 100,000 subscribers, you start to become under more scrutiny and the powers that be start paying attention to why people are watching your channel. And that starts to impact how many people you reach. So there we go. Uh, a story with some anecdotes and a little ramble. Thank you very much for watching this evening video. Hopefully up next is my interview with the man who was driving the iPace. Cheers.